Hello, this is Shambhavi. Welcome to Satsang. Satsang is an ancient spiritual practice from India. It means being in reality together. I give Satsang live every Wednesday and Sunday night in Portland, Maine. This Dharma talk was recorded during one of our Wednesday night gatherings. Please visit jayakula.org to learn more about the teachings. You can find video satsangs on Jayakula's YouTube channel, and my books are all available on Amazon.com. Much love to you, wherever and however you are. I want to talk about anger, ordinary anger, because there's also enlightened anger, but that's a topic for another day. So the biggest view is that whenever you're angry, in an ordinary way, you're angry at God. Somebody said to me today, I'm angry at God. Well, you're always angry at God whenever you're angry. (laughs) Because everything that's here is that. So if you're angry at yourself, you're angry at God. If you're angry at your roommate, you're angry at God. If you're angry at your friend, you're angry at God. If you're angry at the person in front of you on the freeway, you're angry at God. (laughs) If you're angry because you spilled your latte, you're angry at God. (laughs) If you curse when you stub your toe, you're cursing at God. Whenever you're angry, you're angry at God. But there's particular kinds of anger that pertain to being on a spiritual path. Particular forms of being angry at God that we tend to indulge in or encounter. One is just feeling angry and frustrated because we don't understand. When you start to get glimpses of a larger experience, then you realize wow, I wish I had more of that. And you can get angry, you can get frustrated at God because you are limited. You can get angry because you feel limited. If you're just toddling along, thinking that whatever is in your head and whatever is your conventional experience is made of, if you're kind of satisfied with that, then you're really not going to experience this kind of anger. But if you have some kind of sense that there's more, that maybe your mind and what the concepts and thoughts in your mind aren't really quite all that, then you begin to do something to try to have more of an understanding of reality. And then once you do have a little more understanding of reality, you can get really pissed off because then having a little understanding of reality, you realize how incredibly ignorant you are (laughs) and how much more there is and how slowly it is going to go before you have a deeper understanding. So you can get angry at that. That's one, one way, but it's even less common than the most common thing that you get angry at when you do spiritual practice, which is not getting what you want. So... There you are in doing your practice every day. And maybe sometimes it's very exciting. And other times it's boring. And other times it's okay. And other times you're relaxed. And other times you're tense. But what can happen is, especially if you're a a spiritual practitioner who's really immersed in the practice and actually getting fruit from the practice, is that reality will start to relate to you by not giving you what you want. Well, you have some cool experiences when you first start out. And then you go along and you deepen your understanding a bit and you deepen your practice and then all of a sudden, zip. Right? <laughs> uh, this, this has a name in, in a lot of different traditions, but St. John of the Cross and the Christian traditions called it the dark night of the soul. Dark night of the soul means that you're actually being rewarded for being a good practitioner by not getting what you want so that you can relax more, give up all of your projections and expectations about spiritual practice, 
and about attainment and goals and siddhis and whatever it is you've got on your mind, whatever you think spiritual practice is about, you have to give that up. It doesn't mean you have to not get any of those things. It means you have to give up your idea of what the goal of the practice is. Some of us are holding on very tenaciously to an idea about what spiritual practice is supposed to bring us. And you can hang on to those ideas for years or even lifetimes. Hopefully that won't happen to any of us. But, you know, ideas about what enlightenment is or just ideas about what kind of person you want to be by doing your practice. And these ideas can be very obvious to you or they can be very subtle. You, they can just come in the subtlety that you're making the wrong kind of effort. If you can suddenly notice that you're making this effort to attain something, that is not actually spiritual practice in the end. It, it really what it's about is being there with what is in a big way, in a big, open, relaxed way. So if you're being there with your striving to get something, you are not actually being in the practice. And so what will happen is, eventually, you'll stop getting any of the things that you wanted. And maybe for a long period of time, maybe you'll keep striving, strive, 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 strive. Keep, you keep trying to get those things. And eventually, you're just going to give up. And that's like, boom, right? It's too bad you can't give up right away. <laughs> but we all know what that feels like, trying to give up some tension in a moment. It's like, okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't really work. <laughs> but then if we keep practicing, one day it's just gone, you know. We kind of snuck off behind us. <laughs> snuck off when we weren't really trying or looking. And that's how most of the important things in spiritual life happen. They happen when we're not striving to get that result. So we may have very specific things that we want. Some people have read a lot of books about yogic practice uh, or about meditation or something or, you know, about mantra. I want to see my deity. I want to see them in the flesh and have a conversation with them. I want to achieve a light body. I want to achieve a rainbow body. I want to have siddhis. I want to be compassionate all the time. <laughs> Any idea that you're holding on to has to be let go of because you are limited. You're in a limited condition. Anything you can imagine is less than what spiritual practice will bring you. And so this reality in its infinite mercy strips you of those desired outcomes very often by not giving you anything. And then you just have to keep doing your practice. So you can get angry. You can feel resentful. Those, the, this is, it, I mean, I, I don't know any practitioner that this doesn't happen to. And because it's so common, there are whole genres of spiritual writing in that, from India that are involved with yelling at God. Mm -hmm. Right. We think it's terrible. Oh, no, I'm angry with God. Oh, God's going to smite me. Right. It's in, in India, in the tradition, it's recognized as like a thing. You, it's okay to be angry at God. It's okay to yell at God. It's okay to tell God, why aren't you giving me what I want? You suck. You don't love me. <laughs> That's all okay. If you read, especially in the Bhakta tradition, if you, you know, if people here think Bhakta is all like, God. <laughs> It's not, you know, there's part of that, but it's also like, Kali, you've thrown me into poverty. My wife and children have left me. I have nothing, not even a loincloth. No one will feed me. All I do is worship you. You never show up. I hate you. <laughs> there's like reams of poetry like that. <laughs> But when you get to be a little bit more mature, even if you feel angry sometimes, you are going to recognize, you are going to recognize beyond a shadow of a doubt that anything that is occurring is for your benefit. 
you aren't getting what you want for decades on end, stop wanting that. <laughs> Give up. That's the message, right? You cannot experience what is really here through the filter of what you want to be here. You actually have to get rid of that filter. And that is done through the daily grind of doing practice in every condition, every circumstance, every way that you feel, no matter how tired you are, no matter how pissed off you are, no matter how frustrated you are, you just keep doing it. And eventually, all of those expectations will go away, and what will appear is livingness. Right? What will appear is actually God, actually your essence, nature, reality. Not this pale, striving ghost, you know, oh, I want this, I want that. If you got what you wanted and that was all that you were going to get out of spiritual practice, if every one of you got exactly what you want, it would be a pale, limited thing compared to what is actually here. So not getting what you want is part of the grace of God. Now, the other aspect of being angry at God is that when you're angry at God or at guru or at reality itself, then that guru or God is never out of your mind. There's no better form of guru yoga than being angry at the teacher. <laughs> And this is what Ananda Mayama, my teacher, had to say about that. She said, she was, this is in a letter that she wrote to somebody. I see you are not so attracted toward me when not angry. <laughs> <laughs> Often my eyes get automatically closed to see your inner state. So she means that she's closing her external eyes so she can see the student's inner state with her internal eyes. When both of us meet, everything will be settled. But by quarreling from a distance, all the other attachments will loosen. You won't be thinking about your worries about your job or your love relationship or whatever it is. You'll just be thinking about how angry you are with me. And so your other attachments will become lessened. <laughs> what do you say? Maybe you'll feel very angry when we meet. But I'm feeling very happy because I do not get as much love from your happiness as I do from your anger. <laughs> I see that at the time of anger, all your inner words aim at none but me. <laughs> Write very long angry letters to me, and your mind will become lighter as if it were diluted. So it's okay to express your anger at teacher and at God in writing or in words or in whatever way you want, you know? It's a form of prayer, Ma is saying. Write very long angry letters to me and your mind will become lighter as if it were diluted. Then you'll see that inside you, there is none but you and me. There won't be anybody there. You know how it is when you're angry and obsessed about being angry with somebody. There's nobody else in the world but you and them, right? <laughs> Best to be angry at the teacher or at God than your landlord or whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> or yourself. And then Ma said in another place, if you must be angry, be angry with me, for you will not be able to keep it up for long. If you focus your anger on me, it will soon evaporate. Why is this? Because when you are angry at God or you're angry at Guru, you eventually get to the point where you feel the terrible pang of separation from God or from teacher. God may or teacher may be in your mind all the time, but when you are angry, you feel more separate from that person or from God. And if you're angry at God or Guru very, very quickly in comparison to other kinds of ways you can be angry, you will experience that horrible feeling of separation. And you will do your best to let go of that anger so that you can regain a feeling of unity. Nobody likes to be angry at God. It feels terrible. Right? Well, maybe for five seconds it feels good. But then after that, you, miss, you begin to miss the sweetness of your feeling of unity with God or Guru. 
And this is the value of going through that experience. And then it becomes even sweeter still. And if you go through this process many, many times of feeling separate from God or Guru and then reuniting in your own heart, all it means is your heart is, you have more of a feeling of separation in your heart or less. You will, after a time when you realize how utterly painful it is to feel separate from God or Guru, you will do work your absolute hardest to open your heart and feel that unity all the time. And then you will really be practicing. In this country, we have some very babyish ideas about spiritual practice. And a lot of it revolves around this sort of cartoon-like idea of spirituality and holiness. You know, we think we can't make noise at satsang. We think we can't be angry at anybody or angry at the teacher or, the, or God, especially. Whoa, something terrible is going to happen. But in the Indian traditions and specifically in the tantric tradition, all these things are fine. Right? We're here to, to be ourselves. Right? We're not here to enact some idea of something. <laughs>